This is an old project I did a long time ago. It was for a friend. She's a painter, and she goes to flea markets and such, and she has a pretty good business selling things. She ordered a stool, uh, but, you know, a stool that was collapsible. And it wasn't too tall. When it's open, I've used a dowel here to keep it open. And it, it, it's solid when, it, when it's locked open. A piece of metal embedded there, a magnet. A magnet keeps them shut. When the uh, thing's in storage, I use this hook to have a little eyelet and it keeps it from flopping around. And then uh, piano hinges to hold it together, other magnets. Nice and solid on that dowel. And this locks it open nice and solid, so it's really stable. I've used plastic seat because it's on dirt and whatever, and that means the plywood's not getting wet. It's not going to delaminate unless it sinks in. You know, nothing's perfect. The cushion is just some foam and some uh, cloth that I had laying around, so it gives some gives some comfort. All right, I've got this template, and I'm laying it out. There's always going to be some waste, I suppose, but how do you get around having the least amount of waste? You have to allow, allow enough for the saw curve to go in here. And, and that saw curve is a problem, because this is just 600 wide. This piece here individually is 190, from here to a, a line drawn up here. But the problem is, I have to go web to web here, and that's 200. And with the saw curve, that's 202 millimeters, and that means I'd run out of board before I got there. So I'm going to have to make that a little bit less than 100. So there's my six legs. Don't know if the lines are coming through or not. And I'll have room for the two seats up here. Let's cut this off here. This is about 300, this part. Now, to cut these lines, 200 to the middle of the blade, that's what it'll do. Only a mill and a half blade, so we'll see how we go here. go six equal pieces just got to do some fine edge sanding and um, make them all identical best I can and then uh, start assembly That is good. Well, those things are all nice and flat. Square. I'm going to cut these hinges to suit. I've measured here. It's going to be 340 to the first one. That'll go to here. And then um, I want to stagger the holes because this centerpiece will have a hinge on both sides. I don't want the screws to interfere with each other. And on one of these, the seat is also going to be hinged on this. So I'll just go ahead and use the rest of the piano hinge to uh, make that. And that's 
Okay, that's about the length of that's about one length of that. And I'll put it halfway through on both ends. And that'll be uh, enough for me to pinch this. So we'll split the difference. And this hinge here, see the holes are staggered. Good. I always like to pre drill the holes, even with a small bit. Because then I know the screw is going where I want it to go. Gotta stagger them so uh, it's wide, it's narrow. That's too small. Drapery rod, that'll work. Kind of small. What if I have something else? Oh, there we go. Try that one. Part of a broomstick. Well, that's kind of big. Oh well, that worked. Either way, put that in the lathe and narrow it down a bit. This is uh, 21 millimeter diameter, and I reckon 20 will work because the other curtain rod was. Uh, 19 millimeter. That was too small. This is too big. But 20 has got to be the way to go. So I'm going to sand this down to 20. <coughs> 20 mil. that'll do. Okay, on my first one I made that 280 mil, so I'll copy that. Okay, so 280, there's a chip there I want to cut off, so I'll cut that off of there, trim it up good, that's my 280 mark. Okay.
saw this on another YouTube, guys. You run it backwards and it makes a really neat hole, and it does. It doesn't tear out or anything. Amazing. Yeah, that's real good. Happy with that. Okay. Now, time to cut the seats. Okay, 280 would be uh, 140. There we go. That'll work. Room for the magnet. 100 millimeter gate hooks and eyes, four inch. Now the next step is I need to have this stay shut and also the lid or the uh, seat has to latch down and to do that I think I'm going to use these magnets which are uh, just made for cupboards to hold doors shut and I'll just drill a hole and inset them one on this side the other one from this side and then I'll make up some washers that are just screwed on, and that'll be what the magnets hold on to. Oh Pretty strong. But they come with these little pockets, these little um, recesses, I guess to make it, I don't know, make it look nice. But I don't need those, and I uh, didn't know how to get them out. You can't pry them out. Turns out, just by experimentation, whoops. That works. Just need an iron bar and it sticks to that more than it sticks to this cup. These magnets are 18 millimeter. I'll use these spade bits. I've got a 19 mil here, that should do it. Mark a spot, probably right midway. And near the edge. These little magnets are 8 mil thick. So I'm going to set that depth, <laughs> my depth setting, uh, fancy depth setting gauge here is 4 mil. And that will leave me in this piece around 10 mil separation between the magnets. Put a screw straight through it, a nut on this side that will make, uh, make a taper on a nut. On this side, I'll just use a tapered bolt or a tapered screw, tapered head screw. That'll hold it in there. That'll do. Okay, these little nuts have got to cut a taper on the one side, so I'll just jam them together. Put them in my drill and um, grind down one side, and then swap them over, grind down the other nut so it's got a taper.
Good. Just a short screw. And I've um, used my countersink. Hollow that valve a bit so it sits level. Due to the thickness of the hinge, that's almost almost enough here. It's not quite though. So I still have to countersink that magnet in there a little bit so that it has room for the washer that I'm going to use to latch it shut. I've countersunk that. I've countersunk it to hold that nut. And put it together. And I've got to put the washer there for my uh, to hold it all together. Okay. Last thing to do on these two stools is to put on feet because this is used in a grassy field. I don't want this plywood to get wet and eventually delaminate. So um, I found some sticks of plastic. Just drill a couple of holes in the top, countersink them, sand them so that they're kind of in shape, follow the contours, that'll be good. Yeah, it's going up at an angle. So I want to make sure that the screw there changed the position of it so that it, uh, when the angle comes up, it won't hit the screw head. Splitting. Terrific. Alright, so the plywood is splitting. I'm using the largest drill bit that I can. That will still allow the, those threads to engage. And then I'm also clamping it. And I'm also uh, putting glue in the holes. So that it's kind of hydraulic in there. And where there's any void in the lambs, it will uh, make it better, hopefully. Best thing I can do. Very low torque sitting on the drill too, so I don't strip off the screws. Once the glue sets, I think those screws will be nice and firm. They're all sanded, and all I've got to do is put in a couple of coats of this clear, protect it against weather, and all will be good. This is final assembly. It's got my new brand on it.